Hello everyone, this is Uxalis speaking. Nerfing chaotic dampening by Anet kind of prompted me to play with domination line instead of chaos line. As you can see using curtain and mantra days, camps dies as fast as earlier. The damage loss from losing mites have been compensated by vulnerabilities. In solo play it's okay, but in party I don't have stuff to show anymore. So I have loaded blurred inscriptions. Now signet of inspiration when it casts shares distortion for party cleanses a condition from me. More often cast should compensate the fact that I have less boons to share. This allows me to load healing signet for more I warlock damage. So I don't share boons in the party, I share boons and my distortions. This gives signet of eater kind of a complex role. Do I attack with it, do I use it to absorb the nuke or do I let it rot and heal me passively? The defenses are mostly supplied by blinding dissipation. This means that my shutters are utility shutters really. I don't use them mostly to burst, but to space them to blind opponents before their nukes. Combination of all those facts mean that I am not able to defeat this elementalist. Ok, here I got jumped by a shutter mesmer with prismatic understanding. Confounded suggestions stunned me, so I blinked and cast a phantasm. This fired signet of inspiration, fast distortion. I cast signet of eater for another eye warlock, and now he's out of nukes. Stuff 2 allows me to escape immobilized burst combo. And now the fun part starts. Note that both of us use blinding dissipation. The first one to apply blind denies the chance to apply a blind for the other mesmer. Between power block and the blinds, I have regained control and combination of mistrust and overall damage and shutters I was able to whittle the mesmer to his death. Now, this fight takes place against a condition thief. In theory, conditions should be what destroys the high evade thief. In fact, you don't see big numbers from my side. To win this fight I have used Warlock, my opponent noticed that I'm out of Warlock, I used Signet of Eater and another Warlock. Oh wait, it didn't appear. I clicked it and nothing happened. Oh well, Daze, first Warlock connected and Mind Rack. Now, the I Warlock not appearing is connected to a very nasty bug, one which has plagued rangers for like forever on the flying pets. If you press the button while the animation is happening, it doesn't really work, it doesn't really get added to the queue of commands. In human terms, nothing happens. Ok, back to this fight. You can see that in this fight something is really missing. It seems that unlike the previous videos, the only place where conditions were really effective was the camp. On top of that, there is one great weakness in the setup I'm using. Mainly, Signet Hill has longer cooldown than Atophist. And this is kind of my condition cleanse. Signet of Inspiration, like now, can compensate it. But it means in general I get less healing than usual, so I am much easier to attrition. After casting Signet of Ether I have tried to cast Chaos Storm and it didn't proc again. Now, with time I will get used to it. But for now it completely kills my flow because I don't understand why something is not happening while it should. If this happens in solo play it's not much of a problem, I can die any time. But it gets far worse in party play. Consider this, I'm using Signet of Inspiration to share boons to the party mates. This means I need to be close in the middle of the fight. And if distortion time doesn't match the time of the animation it means I can't protect myself with blood frenzy. And then I horribly die like here and I don't understand what happened. Now I need to play with this a bit more to get a hold of it to see how critical this is to my gameplay but I think even this can be compensated. By the way for this single fight seeing the damage those warriors deal and a lot of quickness I have loaded time warp simply to see how much the slow counteracts the quickness. And Chaos Storm didn't appear again. Seeing this it seems I have to change quite a lot in my playstyle. That is assuming that Signet of Inspiration is a keeper but I like that trait really much. Ok, enough whining, let's kill them. Korm is back so I have someone I can support and well this is primarily a support build after all. So I've used Time Warp, not to increase our damage really. Time Warp was to counteract their quickness and to force them to reposition so we don't fight in tight quarters. And as you can see it worked. Between Korm's base damage, my reinforcing the fight, we were able to force one warrior to escape and we downed an elementalist. An underleveled one sure but we downed him. I mean it still counts as a success fight. Ok, so warriors are tactically regrouping so we can take them 2 vs 2 on the ground and I honestly wonder if I shouldn't go higher into power damage and drop the condition damage altogether. Ok, now look at Korm's hit points. Restorative mantras plus the minor. 4000 heal for him. And I haven't even managed to show you the distortion share. And of course boon share because Korm doesn't give me any boons and I don't generate them on my own. So as you can see the build I'm using right now is perfectly viable but because of some inspiration quirks I will have to relearn to play it all together. Still at the drawing board but I've got something fun here. 
So thanks for watching, Uxal is out.